Russell, Ryan Larson, and Tanner Perrotton once again. Let's talk about the postseason and the proposal adding two more state tournaments to the fold, of course. You know, um, I'll start with Ryan. You know, what, what led to this idea of adding a couple more state tournaments to the fold? Yeah, I think when you, when you have three classes, you got to find a way to find a state champion for each class. Um, and it, it's going to look differently. And, and how do you carve that out in, in, in March? How does that all work? And how do you film two state tournaments going on at the same time to your, to your constituents? And, you know, we, we came up with a possible solution where we're able to break that down. I believe the Super A that's currently going on is, is left unchanged. Um, and, and we looked at doing the, 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 the middle class and the class B where we can separate that out into two separate weekends and keep that on three weekends the best we can. And it's gonna be a challenge and, and we, we're still looking for advice from the people that have experience with that. But um, you know, with, with the B, I can speak on behalf of that. The, the new B, I guess you could call it. Um, it would look like eight districts and um, Two districts would be in a region. Um, they could have a district tournament to qualify for those regions, or they could potentially choose to have a super region like some regions do now. That, that will look a little bit different, and, and it's not set in stone by any means, but um, with the advice we, we heard from others and looking at other states, we thought you know, that might be a, a possibility. So We have district tournaments in some regions, don't have district tournaments yeah. in other regions. And I know there's you know, different ideas of whether it's good or bad. Why do the district tournaments work best with, with this plan? I think the small schools that host those really enjoy them and they, it's good for your community and they get to bring people out and make, make some money for their kids at their school and their local businesses and, and that's not a bad thing at all, I don't think. Um, some prefer the Super Regions because, you know, it maybe gets to things quicker. It, it has some challenge games on the way to the final eight that are held at hometown advantage courts and and so on, but um, I think that's that's probably going to be an option that those districts can decide. But um, I think some are probably going to stick with the district tournaments just because it brings that business to your community. With the two state tournaments going on at the same time, you know, what are the concerns as far as the accommodations for for teams who need hotel rooms, fans that need hotel rooms, tournament workers that might need to work that tournament? What are some of the concerns there? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot that goes into running one tournament in one site. You know, and so now you just times that by two and so um, there's a lot of logistical things that go into it like you said from from hotels to restaurants to finding workers to media personnel um, you know so there's there's a lot, a lot that goes into it um, I think that it can be done you know just like with anything change is, is hard at times and so um, you know even if this is something that does go into effect whether it's this year or next year or whatever the case may be um, there's probably going to be challenges and difficulties and, and hiccups and um, it probably won't look perfect right away, you know. Um, but hopefully, like I've said before, hopefully this is something that um, over time can, can get adjusted. There's things that can get ironed out and, um, you know, whether it be um, key components of the plan or whether it be, you know, minor logistical pieces, uh, over time hopefully things will, will iron itself out. One last thing I want to ask, and we'll get you guys out of here on this. Ryan, you mentioned the, you know, adding the state tournaments and everything, but you guys looked at the media side of it. How important is that to make sure that these tournaments are still able to be broadcasted uh, to, to the state so people who can't go are able to sit and watch it at home? Yeah, I think you got to find, you know, the high school activities, you got to find a partner who's able to pull something like that off. And, and that's something they'll have to decide if this would go through their board vote. Um, just finding enough workers to, to, to run those things uh, live on TV the best you can. Um, we talked about where you're going to hold, hold these things, which, which towns can hold a big tournament, um, and, and trying to find venues that'll do that. And like Tanner said, hotels, restaurant, food, all that type of thing. Um, you know, what's the best place that can do that? And, and maybe there's some other larger, middle sized towns in North Dakota that could pull something off too. So. Well, guys, I want to appreciate you for joining us and giving some insight on, on this proposal. Obviously, things are still